Hi Aries, happy damn new year to you. I truly hope you have a wonderful 2024. So this is your first weekly taroscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It is an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. So quick note, these are for your sun, moon and ascendant sign, whether you're a sun, moon or rising sign, Aries, it's for you. And remember to make sure you check out all three so that you know which part of you I resonate with most as a reader. And I've got some really exciting things coming for you this year, uh, two of which will be uh, announced very shortly over the course of this month. Now, with that said, if you are a continued subby, you know Rafi loves you. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share. If you should so choose and it resonates and you want some of that Rafi love, hit the subscribe button for your... Uh, before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, like peace, prosperity and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. They help you all on your path to your highest vibrational good. So, for your key to the week... The first week of the year. Oh. All right, let's have a look, see what is going on for you over the course of this week. And you have the Temperance card. So this is it, right? You come into the year pretty strong. You've got the Temperance card as your key to the week, which means this week you really are looking at remediating all of the factors of your life that have either become toxic or are just not doing what they should be doing, right? This is about you really coming into a sense of balance. Yes, absolutely. But a sense of peace and equilibrium on the inner levels, right? So that you can really start to go after the things that you actually want, the things that you really desire. The thing about the temperance card is it really is about alignment and so the message here is by balancing out your internal energies you are encouraged then to look at what's coming you know what what is out of balance right this is where you're really going to be able to do the work because once you figure that out you can start to make moves okay now for your actions and options with the world at large you have the temperance uh, the death card so this is really interesting because the, the death card is 13 temperance is 14 so this does suggest that you are making, you over the course of this week, you're making peace with the fact that something is coming to an end, right? The death card is endings, completions, culminations. There's no getting past it, right? We, we can't, you know, call a spade a spade. Now, because this is in your actions and options, this is about what you do, what you initiate, what you start, what you put out into the world. And this means that in some way, shape or form, you are consciously choosing one of these actions of remediation is to consciously choose or make a decision to bring something to an end, a completion or a culmination. Now in terms of the opportunities that are available to you, actions and options, the options that are available to you this week is you can let something go. Right, You can free up space in your life, you can truly choose to let something go. Now, uh, with that said, one of these juicy things that I have coming up for you over the course of this year uh, and will be starting as of the end of this month is the Clearing Cohort. If you love energy work as much as I do, if you know, if you've been with me long enough, you know I'm always banging on about it. I love energy work. I'm super passionate about it. And this year I've designed something that is absolutely brilliant, even if I say so myself. And it's basically designed to every month we're going to work through a specific specific theme and we are going to release all of the crap, excuse my language, around that theme, right? So uh, it goes live on the 14th of January. You will be hearing all about the clearing cohort. So if you want to be a part of that, listen out and stay tuned. For your communications and conversations, you have the Knight of Cups. Now, this is offers, opportunities, things that are offered to you. Now, look at this, right? Look, look at the similarities. In order to go for one, right, so the death card is what you're going to have to release in order to free up space for something new to come in, right? That Knight of Cups is bringing something in for you. It usually represents offers and opportunities that are somewhat solid, uh, things that I actually really enjoy. Now, uh, what I will say to you is when it comes to those of you that are studying or in some form of academia, this might be a really great opportunity that comes through your studies or as a result of your studies. The challenge that it looks like you have is you are... Um, 
what's the word that I'm, yeah, the challenge that it looks like you have is it's kind of like you know you're going to have to let something else go in order to kind of move ahead with this. Um, I heard a quote recently that was so good um, and it was like, it basically says that your the the dreams and hopes and experiences that you have that you love are built on the corpses of all of the things that you can that you weren't able to do or that you had to release in order to go after those things that you have now. It's that's a really long paraphrase of, of it, but it was just such an awesome quote. I'll have to dig it out and see if I can post it up on the community tab. For those of you that are employed by somebody else, this could be an offer of a promotion. This could be an offer of a change of position. It could be an offer of. Uh, new money, new resources, but in the background, you've clearly been working on something else because it looks like you're going to have to decide between this, right? So it might be that you don't take the opportunity to have the promotion because you've got something else that's coming in and it feels more aligned with, you know, who you are and where you're at at this moment in time in your life. When it comes to those of you that are business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, people that work for themselves, this Knight of Cups, it does suggest that maybe there is a high ticket client coming in. It suggests that you are, you, you're going to have what you need in order to get ahead, right? And I love this, uh, but especially because if you're a business owner, you're already aligned to what your own desires are. This is going to bring you in someone or something that's going to be able to help you amplify those desires. For those of you that are retired and no longer working for any reason, this Knight of Cups is a chance to, to, to bury a hatchet, right? If you've had a problem or an issue within the family, if there have been family dramas, family issues, etc., there's a chance here for you to squash some kind of, you know, some kind of crap that's just not important, right? Like this is a chance for you to end it. Now, when it comes to your love and relations, you've got the Four of Cups. So it's not an easy energy and it does suggest for those of you that are partnered, married or in long-term commitments, there's something here that does almost speak to the fact that you might, your relationship could potentially be giving you some kind of sleepless night, right? I say that because you've got the four of cups, you've got the death card, which is number 13, one and three gives you four, two fours, represents insomnia, right? So there's something about the relationship and it's the four of cups. So there's something about your relationship or your significant partner or other that at the moment, you know you need to balance it out. For some of you, it may be that there are considerations about whether this relationship is right for you. But on another perspective, if you can talk it out, there's a chance for you to really make some kind of, I wouldn't even say progress, but there's a chance for you to put some kind of long-standing issue to bed. What it's going to require from you with the Four of Cups is for you to really get into how you actually feel and ask yourself what's causing the emotional constipation, because that's what this is about, all right? There's something that is just not moving, and there's a part of you that's feeding into this, right? So where is it that you are a part of this, and where is there a part of it that, you know, someone else needs to own their part of the crap as well? For those of you that are single and looking, you know, especially for a lot of you, this like this week, it's like, oh, you know, I haven't got any prospects for dating and all the rest of it. Not for long, darling. Not for long. It looks like there's going to be some kind of, you know, offer, opportunity or potential uh, to date. Now, the funny thing is, this will likely come through your work, right? So it's maybe somebody that you meet on the job, through the job. Maybe you have a little flirtation with somebody on the phone or, you know, over emails, you have a little giggle and stuff. Yeah, I did it too in my heyday. <laughs> All right, so for your money and materials, you've got the moon card, right? So the moon is the past. And this right next to the temperance card, there is something about your past when it comes to your financial outlook, financial destiny, your financial current experience that does need to shift. And I really feel for a lot of you, this is going to be a belief system. This week, you might really come to realize like, holy crap, that is a money mindset that was handed down to me from my mum or from my grandparents, whatever the case might be. And you see it in the cold light of day and it's like, wow that's really limiting. It's really restrictive in some way. So it's you kind of getting really clear on how you can kind of step out of or step away from it. Um, with the When it comes to your physical health and vitality, this with the temperance card, 
um, it can show up sometimes as like a mystery illness. So it's like something comes up, you have this flare up, it's really weird, it's really concerning, and then it just dies down on its own. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, I can't give you medical advice, this is not a diagnosis, and this isn't to say if you've got some mysterious illness, you should just not worry, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, don't worry about it, it's going to disappear eventually. It, I mean, with this combination, it tends to, um, but go and get checked out right and if they come back and say look we're, we're not really sure what this is we're going to do some more tests listen at the at best you catch whatever it is early at worst maybe it dies down and you know they draw it up as like a bit of an anomaly or a bit of a mystery now when it comes to your um and it will the thing is because it's the moon card as well and temperance it's likely to be your hormones again i'm not a doctor i can't you know i'm not giving you um medical advice or anything like that but it's likely to be your hormones and it will have something to do with your liver your liver is either uh, underactive or not producing something again i'm not a doctor this is not a diagnosis uh, but if you go and you're having tests tell them to check there first for your home and environment the moon card with the temperance card a lot of considerations about the living situation this week you might really be thinking very hard about somewhere that you have previously lived, somewhere that you maybe felt more at home than you currently do. I advise you to dig into that with an astrologer. You could get some really interesting insights from it. Locational astrology is actually one of my favorite branches. Locational and electional are my two favorites like subjects. I'm just like, in awe of them. I love them. Anyway, with that said, uh, remember the clearing cohort is coming on the 14th of January, so stay tuned for that. With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Take care and I'll see you soon.